Hello and welcome to Mental Bar. Today is day seven of beta, so we're getting through the month and it's really great. And so today I want to read a story that I wrote not too long ago for my creative writing club. I like this story a lot. It's sort of a fantasy setting and um, it's pretty open-ended actually. And I don't have any other material on it, but it kind of has some potential for further story, I think. Um, so yeah, I also really like audiobook narration, so that's where this is coming from. Uh, I wish I could say I was being sponsored by Audible to do this or something, but no, I just really like narration, even though I don't do a lot of it myself. So this is sort of practice for me. Um, so I hope you like this story, and I hope you enjoy my narration of it, and yeah. Here it goes. The chamber was lit with torches that burned a low red. When Ava craned her small head towards the ceiling, she could see a haze of smoke collecting in the dome above. White-footed figures lined the walls. She didn't like them. She clung to the nice man's hard hand harder. He squeezed back. Here is the child, said the nice man with the friendly face to a hooded figure at the end of the room. How old is she? said a voice from under the dark cloth. Seven, said the nice man. She is young, said the voice. Ava frowned at the figure. She didn't like being called young or little. I'm going to be eight in only two months, she said defensively. Hush, child, said the nice man. He frowned at Ava, which made her worry about what she had done wrong. She is young, but she is gifted. I have seen her power. You must not be mistaken, my servant, said the figure to the nice man. He looked worried, too. He turned to Ava and smiled at her, but he still looked worried. Can you show us what you can do? he asked kindly. With the floor? asked Ava. Won't that be bad? Not here, said the nice man. Here, nobody will get angry at you or be afraid. Here, people like it when you do that. Ava perked up. They like it? Yes, go and show them, over there in the middle of the floor. Remember? Like a puddle. Like a puddle, she repeated. She walked out into the middle of the floor self-consciously, then looked at the nice man again for reassurance. Go ahead, he said, and smiled at her again. Ava knelt down and felt the stones under her fingers. She thought of what it looked like when she threw a stone into a pond, then imagined the stone under her fingers doing the same. She held her breath and creased her eyebrows and made the stone floor do what she imagined. The figures around the perimeter of the room murmured as the stone floor radiated in ripples like waves from the place where the child knelt. The nice man smiled. Then she lifted her hand from the floor and stood up, sweating a little. It always makes me tired, she said, yawning. You are amazing, said the nice man. Ava smiled blearily at him, then seemed to remember the white-hooded figures standing around the perimeter of the room. She hurried back over to him and grabbed his hand again. Indeed, my servant, said the voice of the hooded figure. You have found one with a true gift. He bowed to the figure. Thank you, master. She will be taken in, said the hooded figure. Ava was confused. What does that mean? It means, my child, before the nice man could hush her again, that you have a place in the order, said the hooded figure. What's that? You will learn said the hooded figure. Ava was a little scared, but she felt excitement and mystery rising inside her. Will I learn how to be a wizard? she asked eagerly. All in due time, heard the hooded figure. Now follow me. The figure opened a door and swept inside, beckoning to Ava. Ava looked up at the nice man, her face shining. Are you going to come too? she asked. No, said the nice man, suddenly very sad. He molded his face into a smile. But you might see me sometime. It was unlikely. Okay, she said brightly. She smiled wide at him, waved goodbye, then ran into the hallway ahead of the hooded figure. The door slammed shut behind the pair. The nice man stared at the door as if he could still see them. He felt more sad, guilty even, than he should have. He had given her a life. He had given her a name. He had found her on the streets all alone, and now she was somebody. 
but he had also given her something that she would curse him for for the rest of her life. I am sorry, my child, my dear little Ava. You will not remain a child for long. So I hope that you enjoyed that story. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe subscribe to my channel. Um, I'll see you in the next video. I'll be posting two videos tomorrow for Saturday to make up for missing Sunday for religious reasons. And so, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.